Hey guys and welcome to Wild Anirudh and in this video I am going to tell you about my recent trip to Tatekad. The forest of Tatekad is situated near Kochi. It's an hour's drive from the Kochi airport. We stayed at the Eldhouse Birding Lodge which is one of the best places to stay in Tatekad. One of the plus points is that they have a slaty legged crake and many other birds on their property. At lunch time, we reached Eldhouse Birding Lodge and immediately saw a chestnut head bee eater and a rare blue bearded bee eater. The blue bearded bee eater was very much a surprise sighting and we did not see it in the entire trip ever again. Our guide was Mr. Wimmel and Jis. His number is in the description. In the evening, we went to the flycatcher hide. The first bird we saw was a yellow broad bulbul. They are small yellow birds native to the western ghats. They are very vocal. We saw many rufous tree pies feeding on worms. They are a common bird in whole of India and they are also seen in urban areas. A black rump flame back also came to eat. They too are commonly seen and are very beautiful birds. Woodpeckers generally do not come to the feeders but in Kerala they do. We noticed that a big bird was mimicking a crested goshawk and all the passerines flew away from the bird bath. It was none other than the enemy and the protector, Greater Racketail Tronco. These birds are very beautiful and often fascinate me. They can mimic up to 70 different species of birds. They also pick fights with birds bigger and smaller than them, like this individual who had a fight with the Rufus tree pie. One of the ground foraging birds that are found in the western ghats is the red spur fowl. It is a very shy bird, but it comes to the bird hides to eat worms. Male of this species have a large spear-like feature on the back of their legs which are used for fighting for mates and territory. Those are spurs and that is how they get their name. Another rare and shy bird is the rusty tail flycatcher. It would only come out on the perch just for a few seconds and would go back in into the dense bushes very quickly. Not much is actually known about these birds. They are migratory. Another migratory flycatcher is the blue-throated flycatcher. It is very similar to the Tickle's blue flycatcher but it does not have a pointy orange throat. They come to South India from the northernmost parts of India, China and western parts of South Southeast Asia. They are very rare in the Hyderabad region so I was really happy to see this bird. The Malabar Whistling Thrush is one of the most melodious singers in India. It is the lead singer of the morning orchestra near any stream or glade in the western ghats. Personally, I love photographing them because of their amazing personality. Utmost content with our sightings at the flycatcher hide, we headed back to the Eldhouse Lodge. At the lodge, I got my first lifer of that trip, the Green Imperial Pigeon. It is a large, green and grey bird found in large forests. It is much bigger than other doves and pigeons, hence the name Imperial. They are found in most parts of South India and Northeast India. We also came across a juvenile black hooded oriole. They too are common birds in Tatekad and have a pleasant call. The black and yellow contrasts make this bird very photogenic. Day 2 at Tatekad was one of my best birding days of all time. While eating breakfast, I saw this grey jungle fall far away. Then we left for Urulan Tanni. There was very dense fog. The roads were very beautiful and it was a pleasant ride. We reached the place and climbed a hill. There, we came across a flame-throated bulbul, thick-billed flower pecker, Asian brown flycatcher, orange minivet and Indian swiftlet. There was a group of Asian fairy bluebirds which gave some good shots. They are found in Western Ghats and Northeast India. We came across many Malabar barbets too, which were perching on the high trees. We also sighted a dollar bird, which is found in the Andamans, Western Ghats and Northeast India. Later, the fog cleared up and gave us an amazing view of the mountains around. We drove to a nearby area and found the Sri Lankan frogmouth. This bird is one of the most characteristic birds of Tatekad. They were sleeping. 
they are nocturnal birds which feed on insects and moths with their huge beak we were not lucky enough to see them open their eyes but this sighting was also great then we saw the malabar trogon undoubtedly the most sought after bird in the western ghats we only saw it for a few seconds at the same place there was a malabar flameback pecking on wood the malabar flameback was recently described at a, as it was split from the greater flameback as of now greater flameback is found in north india whereas malabar found, malabar flameback is found in the western ghats later we started looking for the rare blue eared kingfisher we went 500 meters into the deep jum- jungle of trail parallel to a stream there were a few leeches which bit us i might have also tripped a couple of times because of the roots of the old trees but in the end it was all worth it we finally got the blue eared kingfisher then we reached the spot to look for the sri lanka bay owl there was a large crowd there be- because there was also a slender loris we got the loris and the sri lanka bay owl it was very exciting to have seen two ultra rarities in the span of 1 hour we went back to the lodge and saw a white rumped munia our evening session was at the tree pie hide this place is known for its large number of white bellied tree pies they are very large and noisy birds cousins of the rufous tree pie white bellied tree pies are endemic to the western ghats then we got to see a death stare between rufous tree pie and female streak throated woodpecker the tree pie stood tall and intimidating but the lady woodpecker who was much smaller in size did not show weakness next came the malabar flameback it is a large and beautiful woodpecker males have a red claret crown with a bright golden cape it ate some worms and then flew away The Malabar grey hornbills at Thate Kad are simply majestic. You will probably never see a hornbill closer to you than in Thate Kad. A pair of them would come down to eat the worms. Since the hornbill have such a curved beak, they have to grab the worms and toss them in the air to eat them. We saw a mom and son hornbill feeding. The adults have a bright orange beak and the juvenile is smaller with a yellow color beak. After some time we started our return journey back to the lodge both the hides are very close to the elders birding lodge now you would be wrong in thinking that the day is over we came back to the resort and got only 10 minutes of break after that we went nearby on the property near a marshy area we waited for we, we waited for around 15 minutes and out of the bush came a slaty legged crake These birds are extremely rare and shy but can be seen here at Tate Kad in the Eldos Birding Lodge. It fed on meal worms beside a greater racket-tailed rongo. An Indian pitta also came. We had to use a torch because these pictures were taken after sunset. We didn't bother the crake and the pitta too much. Now it was our turn to go owling. We sat on the jeep and drove to many locations. First, we saw the mottled doodle. This was my first time photographing owls photographing owls at night. Unlike night jars, owl, owls actually move around a lot which makes them hard to photograph at night. All I got was a record shot of the mottled doodle. Then we got the Indian scopsol which coordinated with us and gave us amazing looks and an even better photograph. We also got a nice jungle owlet. Overall day 2 was an 11 on 10. The morning of day 3 was a slow morning. There was not much activity. We reached a spot where there was a wonderful view of the hills. We saw a crested serpent eagle and nilgiri flower pecker. Later we got wonderful views of Malabar trogon with both male and female. The fo- the Malabar trogon is an amazing bird found in the western ghats. Males have a black head and a red belly. Females are brown and dull. In the evening, we went back to the flycatcher hide. First to come was a lesser flameback. It is a very common bird. We saw it feeding on worms. We also saw an orange-headed thrush up close. They are common birds in India. 
there is a subspecies in the Himalayas which does not have the white face. They are mostly ground bird with ground birds which can be also seen on trees. Then we saw a Malabar whistling thrush. They are large black and blue birds. They are found in the Western Ghats and in the Eastern Ghats. Then we saw a greater racket tail drongo. The fanning and the movement of the long tails in slow motion is a really nice sight to see. We also saw a blue throated flycatcher which was too fast for me to get a video of. Birders often say that birding can be very unpredictable. I always thought of it from the point of view of what you see in the trips. Day 4 taught me that there are many more things which can be unpredictable. Day 4 was our last morning in Tatekad. Our flight was in the afternoon. I was roaming around the property and saw a white-throated kingfisher and suddenly we found out that our flight had been cancelled. Thankfully, there was another flight which took off at midnight. We booked that flight and an evening session at the tree pie hide. At the time, I was unhappy about everything that was going on, but I would not regret it one bit. We reached the tree pie hide and immediately saw a streak-throated woodpecker male. Males have a red cap and females have a black cap. Then we heard a lot of commotion among the starlings. There was a raptor nearby. Before I could get up and check the skies, a black baza came and landed on a tree just behind the bird hide. I had never seen a baza so close at eye level. We also saw a greater racket tail drongo calm and composed, preening its feathers and looking around. There was a Malabar grey hornbill too, tossing the worms and eating them midair. We also saw a few red whiskered bulbuls. In the end, there were many tree pies drinking water with a streak throated woodpecker. Overall, Tate Kaat was an amazing trip. And if you want to see some of the birds of the Western Ghats, you must and should visit both Tate Kaat and the old magazine house. I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy birding.